Hey everyone, you are here at the weekly chaos community call. Great to see everybody here. It's April 2nd, not April 1st. I don't know if anybody saw, I think Sean saw my joke in the general chat, how we should just make all meetings on troll time. <laughs> it's an actual time zone though. Troll time zone is an actual thing, in case you didn't know. I, I wanna live my life by it. What's the UTC conversion? Uh, I think it's the same. Maybe? Oh, okay. I don't, the same I don't as what? The troll time. <laughs> uh, it's in like a it's a, a base in Antarctica. Is the the time zone that that's in? So. Oh. I think it's UTC plus two. Ah. So, yeah. um, Only we had machines that could tell us. I, I don't trust any of the machines, though. That's the thing. I think they're all self-aware and just messing with us all the time. It's an incredible thing. I was just assuming like trolls, not like troll a place. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, I did too. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like plus two hours and 15 seconds or something. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, no, I thought it was a joke. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh my gosh, it's a real thing. It's a real place. I want to go there. Like just get a selfie or something. I don't know. Anyway. Enough chit chat because we got to get to it. Um, if you have not, if you're a, if you're a prankster, we would love to hear about that. If you're not, that's also valid. I do hate them as well for those who hate them too. I just I don't think they're very funny. Um, my children, on the other hand, have the complete opposite, and they are constantly pranking each other. Constantly, I have some good stories, but we don't have time today. So, yeah. Um, let's hop into this. Uh, just as another reminder, we're going to keep reminding everybody. We've taken them off the calendar, but we're going to remind everybody anyway. The week of April 15th, which is not next week, but the week after, we are having no chaos meetings because we all need a break. A lot of us are traveling to OSSNA. There's Chaos Con, and sometimes it's good to just have a break. I'm a, I'm a big fan of breaks. So no chaos meetings. Um, if you are a working group chair and would like to help us all out, help us spread the word um, in your meetings. I guess that would be this week. Yeah, if you have a meeting this week, your meeting in two weeks is going to be canceled. So make sure that you help spread the word if you can. I will also do my part and do my best to help spread the word without being too annoying, but I get annoying sometimes. So it happens. Any questions on that before we move on? It's pretty straightforward, but you never know. Okie dokie. Uh, next one is a conversation that was um, from actually I think two weeks ago. I don't know if Anita is on today. I don't see Anita. Uh, don't know if any of the other code of conduct members want to bring this up or if we want to wait for Anita. How are we feeling about that? This is the this is the crux of the conversation is figuring out how we as a community want to handle public and private posts on social media from our members. At least I think that's the gist of it. Um, hi, Elizabeth. It's my blessing. Hi. Okay, I think Georg should actually go for this. Hi, Georg. <laughs> I, I can also sign in on this. We have a proposed language change, and I don't have it in front of me. Mary Blessing, do you have the link to the document? Also trying to sorry i didn't want to put anybody on the spot yeah okay i found it so this is um in the code of conduct we have a section about the scope and the challenge that was brought up is ha what happens if someone who is a well-known chaos member uh, does something inappropriate on their personal social media 
space. It's not an official chaos space, but they are tied to chaos and whatever they do might reflect back onto chaos. And so we are proposing to keep it simple and adding what's here in blue that anyone holding a prominent position in the community um, also should hold, should be held accountable for what they're doing, even when they're not in an official chaos channel or at an official chaos event, it can still reflect back onto chaos. I would, uh, so from my perspective, if that social media account points out that they're part of chaos, then that's fair play. If their social media account is individual and does not reference chaos, then that's no different than my employer surveillancing me. And I don't like that or think it's appropriate. Um, did we get feedback from, say, someone like Sage Sharp, for example, on this change? We have not showed it to anyone. This is the first time that we are bringing this to the community. The reason I say that is because things are things are worded in very precise ways in the contributor covenant um, for good reasons that I probably don't understand because I'm not deeply involved in it. And I figure someone like like Sage Sharp because they are deeply involved in lots of code of conduct discussions. They might be a better. Um, judge of whether this is a good change or not. I'm reluctant to make changes to the code of conduct beyond what they've made in the contributor covenant. Um, and especially not without having it reviewed by someone who's an expert in code of conducts. Contributor covenant. Is that what I said? Did I say something else? You think you said code of conduct, but I know what you meant. No, I, I put contributor code. That doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> a new thing. Covenant. I do think that if you are a public figure on behalf of chaos, and I might, I might push back a little bit, Sean, on what you said um, about like calling it out, only because I feel like if you have done um, several talks and talked about chaos a lot, people will associate you with chaos, even if you don't say that in your profile. And I think that when you get to that point, like with great power comes great responsibility, right? Like you, you could have the power to negatively affect this project by what you say, whether you want that power or not. I think that by putting yourself out there and speaking publicly about chaos and being super engaged and involved, you kind of are, are elevating your position as a, as a leader in the community. And that kind of comes with the territory. That's my personal feeling. I, I think it, I mean, I'm thinking, of course, there are people, yeah, I, okay, I'm listening. Vinod, I see you have your hand, go for it. Yes. So uh, I was thinking of a, from a like, since our organization is more of an international, like it has a global presence. And I was thinking of it from a diverse perspective. So for example, uh, we, uh, here we talk about DEI and in some countries, like the country I belong to, the DEI is not spoken at all. Right. And if I, uh, as a personally, if I talk to something from those contexts that will not be representative of chaos. So I, 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 I personally, I disagree on this, like uh, the personal space is different. Yes, if I say, okay, I'm a member of chaos and then those tweets represent like in some way, fashion represent it. But if, I, if I'm silent on the Twitter, for example, tweets or anywhere, I don't say I belong to chaos or do anything, though I actively participate. But if I don't, if I'm silent and I'm just in that context, that context might not reflect what chaos thinks. So bringing those two together is, uh, I don't know. I, I don't feel like maybe a legal opinion will be, as Don pointed out, getting their expert opinion will be much better option rather than outrightly saying no. Uh, so because different uh, countries or different 
cultural backgrounds represent different things. So, go ahead, Sean. Um, you know, just getting. I think there is no way that we have the resources to fairly implement a policy like this. So if there's like over a thousand people in the chaos channel, how are we going to fairly execute this surveillance activity? And how are we going to re resource the surveillance of these social media contacts? So I think it it's going the to come of, down code to- Code of conducts are never surveillance activities. Code of conducts require reports. So someone reports someone and says, I believe that this person has violated your code of conduct listed here. So regardless of how this is worded, that that is how code of conducts operate. So I would say that if my behavior online, using myself as an example, has no connection to chaos, has no link to chaos, uh, I and everybody else on earth gets to be whoever they are. Now, if they're complete jerks, I would expect that that's going to come through in their chaos branded activities as well as their not chaos branded activities. Like someone who's violating a code of conduct. I mean, there has to be some kind of contextual boundary other than all of the behavior that you ever have online. Is this about, uh, is this about providing guidance to our community or is this about catching people misbehaving? Uh, because if, if we're putting something into our code of conduct, conduct, it could, this could just be about providing guidance to our community on you know, if you're discussing chaos related issues, you know, state that it's your opinion, uh, disclose your affiliation with chaos, things, things of that nature, just kind of giving guidance on how to handle concepts related to chaos on your, on your social media. So, so rather than trying to catch people misbehaving, is, is this more about just providing policy on who can speak, who speaks for chaos and and how to share your opinions related to chaos activities. If it's in the code of conduct, if people violate it, then then they can re report it as a code of conduct violation. So this is not, I mean, this is guidance to the community about how to behave, but it's also it also has consequences. And from the from the code of conduct team, we have been thinking about doing that guidance piece as well, where we maybe write blog posts or expand on what's in the code of conduct and provide examples and so on to the community to have that more front of mind because the code of conduct is sometimes short and there might be more going on and expanding on that a little bit and bring that to the conversation is something we've been thinking about. Um, I just want to share a little bit of history and I'll put it in the chat just so it comes up. Um, I have seen incidents like this happen. Um, and I think where it became problematic was when the individual was in a position of authority in the project in the sense that they were representing it. And even though it was their personal social media handle, it was construed as being the leader of Project X says Y kind of problem. Or I think before, if if that individual wasn't in a notable position, then I, I don't think that it would have had the same concerns. I think there's sort of the like, what is the partitions, participation space and what is not like your personal space? Um, but I think like that's, that's where it ran into issues in other cases. So I think I, I, so I, that language makes sense to me, but I, again, I agree with everything's being said. I'm, I'm not an expert here, would want to run this by others, but I think having a little bit more clarity on when and how these expectations are there could be helpful for contributors. Like what is definitively only their personal space and what is chaos space, recognizing that social media is a little bit more unbounded. Um, but I think it might be wise to put more emphasis on those that are again, like, in a prominent position where even if they're expressing personal views, it could be construed as they're a leader of this project and the project is espousing those views. And I think if we did go with some language like this, that prominent is not um, well-defined enough. 
I think we would need to say, you know, like in a leadership position, for example, or in, um, because prominent doesn't, there's, there's no definition for that. I think we have to be a little more clear. Sean, go ahead. I was just going to say another reasonable constraint would be that the social media is itself public. So if a person's in a mutually agreed to relationship, like on Facebook, you can't follow me unless I follow you. We Everybody has to agree. So it's a mutually mutual consent. That's not public. If it's not a public post, doesn't apply. If it's a public avenue like Twitter or Blue Sky, then reasonably you're not invading anyone's privacy or private circle. So the code of conduct, some are very explicit with calling out one-on-one -on -one engagements or interactions. So if you're at a conference and you have a conversation one-on-one -on -one outside the building, that can still fall under the code of conduct for being at the event and being part of the, the thing. It's also on IRC, if you call out someone in a personal chat, even if it's not a chaos chat, but if it came, if there are two chaos members and they're talking about chaos stuff maybe it can still fall under the code of conduct so just saying because no one else heard what happened is not a reason the code of conduct won't apply yeah i, mean, I think yeah one-on-one -on -one communication or one to group communication that's direct and deliberate i think certainly that makes sense i think in the case of like mutual consent social media like facebook there is a very big difference between that and like a private communication on IRC. Uh, you're agreeing to be part of a person's circle. You can always leave it. Um, but that person's communication, unless it's a public post, is not public. And the engagement's almost certainly not between anybody that's part of a project. And I mean, if it is, I suppose that would apply. But most of the time, people are not posting about things on Facebook that relate to chaos in any way. So I'm going to point out that we have 10 more minutes in the chaos meeting before we transition to the chaos con meeting. Thank you for all the feedback. We'll take it back to the code of conduct team and we'll keep you updated and bring this back. We won't make any change at this point. This is purely to get your feedback. So thank you for all that. Yeah, great conversation. Thanks, everybody. Um, Appreciate everyone. Do we want to move on then? And we can bring this back up next week when we maybe have time. Uh, I think Matt had put this in here. I just wanted to. So we have an opportunity to work with Sonotype on their open source security and open source supply chain um, uh, report that they put out. I think it was around the member summit last year. Um, I think they have used Grimoire Lab. Correct me if I'm wrong, Georg, but software in the past for their report. Yes, they have. Yep. And so I think they wanted to, they would like to work with members more closely, just in terms of thinking about metrics or how we could think about software supply chain security. And uh, Jeff, I have to get his last name, but uh, basically this stemmed from both of us arriving in the Monterey airport about two hours too early because we got through security really fast. <laughs> 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 and so a super nice guy. Um, I could give you the full contact group that we have there. Um, but if people are interested in participating in this, that would be great. Or if you have expressed concerns about chaos participating in this and working with Sonotype on the report, also let me know. I'm in, in the process now of circulating this within the community, to see if anybody has feedback or would like to join in. And if you would like to see the report, uh, prior, you want to join in or you have concerns, Sophia? <laughs> Wyman. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would love to help. I was going to say I had a long chat with Brian Fox a couple years ago oh, yeah. at another LF satellite event. So yep. um, I I think I talked to him right after that last year's report came out, not this one. Okay. Um, okay. About it. So yeah, no, I, I, I'd love to sit in on this because I think at least I was really excited about how they've been basically starting to test metrics uh, by looking at sort of like historical vulnerability events 
uh, and whether or not some of like the, when they do scorecard to look at whether or not there was any sort of predictive element of actually looking at these as criteria that would make you more likely to experience a vulnerability or security incident. Um, and I think, I mean, granted, their report is very security focused, but I think given the extents of analysis potential they have. Um, I don't know. I just find it very interesting from a research opportunity to see, can we inject a few more opinions on what metrics they should be testing and espousing in their report? So basically this, I'm saying I'm interested. <laughs> perfect. This would be great. And, and we're at the point of um, talking with them where we can talk about just exactly these things. So we haven't really started the conversation at all. So perfect. Thank you. So we've got Sophia, Garrig, and Gary. That's great. Thank you, everybody. So that's it for me. All right, thank you. Next one on our list is gonna be another kind of uh, long conversation. So we'll just drop this here to like plant the seed. Uh, Mary Blessing and I and a few others have been working on this um, ambassador program uh, for chaos. So here's a doc. Um, I think uh, Mary Blessing, do you wanna talk about this really quickly? If not, that's totally fine too. We can just like leave it for people and have them read through it. Yeah, I think maybe we can talk more about this thing later on since we don't have enough time to do that now. Okay. So if people want to read through this, leave comments in the doc, um, that's great. We, that's really why we brought it here is that we're looking for input from the community on this as we build it out. Uh, so we will bring this up again next week. Okay. Um, I see this is also on here. Do we have, uh, who put this on here? Who wants to talk about this? This is just me. I, so we have the education program. We have about 51 issues in our education repo. Um, we really do need volunteers to create slide decks or videos around particular things like context working groups or our metric model working group or auger or Gamora lab or the badging program there just there are a lot of things that i know that some folks are looking for um, and the hope i think the hope was is that we could get members from the community to volunteer to help create some of these they really don't take very long to create, and you could create a slide deck, but not the video or the video based on the slide decks that are created. So there are a lot of different ways to get involved. And the hope was that it doesn't just come down to, you know, a handful of say three people creating all of the videos or something like that. So I, I really am encouraging you all to participate in this. If you have time, if you have an interest, that would be really great. And if it's, you know, sparking your interest and you are thinking like, yes, I do, but I don't know what to do, just reach out to Peculiar. She can absolutely point you in the right direction based on what your interests are and your skills and what you want to do next. She will help you. Matt, you may have already uh, mentioned this, but um, is there a list of the different content assets or pieces yes. that, yeah, okay. I'll put, awesome. it in the, I'll put it in the chat and I'll put it in the minutes here. I'll go grab Oh, it. great. Okay. Thank you. you yeah, that's a great question, Nicole. There are, so yes, there is a list of all the content that we're looking for. Um, and if you have an idea for something and we don't have it on the list, that's also valid too. And we're looking for education about chaos. We're also looking for education about how to get started in open source because we want this to be a, a resource for everybody in chaos. So, yeah. Okay, we got three minutes, so I'm gonna move on quickly, sorry. Um, not sure who put this on here? That was me. Uh, we had a conversation about how to identify the next situation like Redis or XC in the uh, Augur working group this Monday. I'm just putting it out there that uh, Callie had put out the APB to attend the metrics model and metrics working group if you wanna learn more about that. and how it might turn into a research project of uh, what indicators might have existed and what kind of information we could have used to maybe see something like this uh, coming or if it happens again. Uh, there have been quite a few incidents like this of license changes and really big vulnerabilities coming out of nowhere. So 
we're going to be looking at that. And I'm just bringing it up while we're in the weekly meeting, if anybody wants to get involved. You said the metrics models, right? Yeah, I think uh, we're looking at the metrics models. Sean can double check that I was. Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, it was either. I think it might have been data science, Gary, but I'm not positive. Oh, OK. Uh, I'm trying to find the post, but yeah, just come to all the meetings. Yeah, come to all the meetings. <laughs> yes. Uh, I did drop some preliminary. We we do have the person who's responsible for the XZ hack in the Augur database. And I did identify other repositories that they were in, but we're not able to get at the XZ repository right now because GitHub closed it. So hopefully they they hey, open it. Your software heritage. I yeah, think. somebody suggested that. Yeah, um, I put it, I put the link in the in that thread. I was oh, able yeah, I missed, to do it. Yep. I missed that. Yep, it was data science, by the way. Sorry about that. I said metrics, but it's data science. Data science. Might be. Okay. Cool. And um, we have one minute. <laughs> yeah, this is a really, yeah, really fast one. I put it in there. Sorry to jump in, Elizabeth. Um, more that. I know we were talking last week or the week before about it might have been the adopters files, uh, but then we also mentioned research citations. And I realized I did have one, but then I was looking at the adopter files and it seems more like tooling and vendors. I didn't know if we had a separate repo for research citations for chaos projects um, or should those be put in the adopters MD? Are you talking about like citing chaos metrics, Sophia? Um, or just like citing chaos projects. Like I was just thinking I did actually publish an article last year that used Baturgia slash Grimoire Labs, and I could list that as a citation because um, I know that those, those don't really come back to the project. And we were, I, we, I guess we were talking about whether or not adopters should also include research citations or if we would want to keep that separate if we want to record it at all. I like the idea of putting it in the adopters file, because I think from a chaos perspective, the research folks are important adopters of our metrics and our software. Maybe maybe create a section for it. I don't know what you've titled the other section, but I wonder if we just have like two sections in our adopters file. It's like, you know, research adoption and organizational adoption or something like that. I like the idea, though. Might be taking longer than a minute, though. It's like we have opinions. So we can actually table this and bring it up next week. It's not urgent, clearly. It, this thing already exists. I just wanted to loop it back in. Sean, if you have a quick comment, you can make I was it. just going to mention that there's a tool called Cite As, where academics can, you can tell people what paper to cite. So I wouldn't, I don't think, I would think citing Grimoire Lab makes sense if that's how you got your data. I think citing Augur makes sense if that's how you got your data. And each project, can either let themselves be cited as a repository or put a site as entry in their project to reference the specific paper they want people to cite when they use it. I actually think those are two completely separate topics, but uh, we're out of time in this meeting. I think the the citing citing as a as software in papers, um, I think is different than what Sophia was talking about because the adopters.md file is something pretty specific. Okay, well, she said research citation, but okay. Okay, well, I'm gonna stop sharing. So for those who are new, um, this is a thing we do when it's time for Chaos Con, we will chop this meeting in half, as you see. So if um, you are not on the Chaos Con committee and you would uh, like to leave, you are welcome to do so. The rest of you um, stick around so we can talk about some Chaos Con stuff, finalized stuff. For everybody else, see you later. Bye.